Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 4 vs 4 breakthrough game on Lyakovici and in this one I'm going to be playing the 26th guards on the Soviet side on defense. Please remember that this is still beta and therefore everything is subject to change. On my team today I have Jen Jeft, Adolf and Tiny Brick who are going to be playing with the 2nd guards, 2nd guards and 26th guards respectively. And on the Axis side, on offense, we have Mickey, James, Acker, and Dragoon, who are going to be playing with the 5th Panzer, 78th Sturm, 5th Panzer, and 5th Panzer, respectively. So, I thought I would bring you guys this replay today, since it is a good opportunity in this beta phase to show off a large breakthrough game, uh, which can be very, very epic indeed. Now, we have a, an abundance of defenses to put down, so I have sped this up and you can see we're already five minutes into the replay as we continue to put down defences. But we have been assigned this left side which is this town and also just the right side here uh, with a little bit of responsibility for the high ground. On our right side is Adolf and you can see that he's actually placed down a pretty cool looking defensive area here. He's got a this two in a gun pit in the middle of a square trench line which is occupied by a couple of Gvardia and a Motraz Vedka and surrounded by the barbed wire as well. So nice little defensive area but uh, very exposed so not necessarily the best way to use your defenses. But let's have a look at my defenses on the left side. We've got a double line of barbed wire in the open here that's just going to prevent any forces from coming across quickly unless they come down the main roads and if they come down the main road well they'll bump into my 45 millimeter AT gun. On the left side as well we have an IS-1 uh, which is covering that same road and up onto the hill there. Then across we have a bunch of these Maxim bunkers. They have pretty sort of constricted line of sight but that's the whole idea as uh, they can sort of kill the infantry as they get closer. Then alongside those I've got a bunch of Kavaria with the PTRDs and then I've got the snipers at the front just to give us the recon information of anything coming our way. In the train station here we got some Sapari and the Sturm of Niki with the flamethrowers and the Sturm of Niki will only engage at the 100 meter range so if anything gets close to the train station they'll just get burnt out which is fantastic. Then we got a Bunker Maxim that's going to be keeping an eye on the train line and the road on the left side. We've got a Bunker Maxim that's going to be shooting any infantry that come in between the buildings. And then we've got another Bunker Maxim that's going to be taking control of the right road. Furthermore, we have a 45mm AT gun that's going to be covering the road to the left side as well. And also has the line of sight to shoot up onto the hill if anything breaks through on this top area. Uh, then what we do is have a trench on the side of this hill. It is basically just far enough away uh, that we can shoot into the tree lines with the Gavardia, uh, whilst also being in range of the road so that they can use their PTRDs, just like these two PTRS squads uh, that are waiting to get into this bunker. Unfortunately, this uh, PTRS squad in the middle here was being a little bit greedy, so these guys had to sit off to the side for a little while as they couldn't fit in, but uh, I do sort that out later on. I've got them all covered up by this uh, command here, though. That's giving the extra Star of Veteran seat to the AT bunker, which is pretty important to make sure that that always hits the mark. Then we have a KV-1E back here, just to provide a little bit of heavier defense. Same deal at the back side on the left. And that's more or less our entire defense line. And we are seeing Mickey build up over here. He's got a uh, Tiger E and the Tiger E Fjella. But those are going to have to try and get through the ZIS-2. And the ZIS-2 does have the APCR shells with the 185mm of penetration. But as soon as it uses those up, it actually falls down to 120mm of penetration, which is not enough to break through the front armor of the Tiger. So this ZIS-2 could definitely be having a hard time shortly. Now, I haven't really talked about my battle group much, but we are going to be playing today with my uh, 26th Guards Cluster Memes battle group, which is the battle group that makes use of the cluster bombers quite a lot. So we'll be looking for opportunities to use those cluster bombers throughout the game to take out some of the heavy armor that the 5th Panzer Divisions can bring in. Meanwhile, though, on the left side, I'm just uh, reinforcing my lines even more, bringing in some closer range infantry. The Sapari here, great for just killing any infantry that try and cross come, 
come across the open. They do have a machine gun, but they also have the HE grenade that they can use at close range. Then we've got some Shlem of Niki on this uh, right side. They can use the flamethrowers at the 100 meter range to burn out any infantry that come their way. And from an entrenched position, they actually do very, very well. Over Blitz is going to be the uh, first casualty of our defenses here on the left side. The bunker took out that. I also failed to mention this barbed wire that we've placed on the edge of the hill here just to slow down any advance of tanks towards this direction. We are going to have some mortar fire coming our direction. Uh, the Kavadia and Saparit are going to be targeted by that but not too much else to worry about just yet. However, up on the hill this defensive line from Adolf is not the best. There's no AT really to stop any uh, armoured vehicles from coming up onto this plateau. So Adolf's being forced to bring in a T-34-85 uh, that can deal with that kind of stuff. And I'm also going to bring, be bringing in, in my own KV-1Es uh, for the same effect. Now amongst those KV-1Es we're also bringing up a bunch of these Maxims, these Maxim trucks. Provide a little bit of AA cover just in case uh, the enemy decide to use some air force. So just getting our AA lined up sort of preemptively, I guess, in case any forces try to attack us. And this Maxim is going to be able to cover the open here, again against any infantry that try to make ground. It's actually got a pretty decent line of sight all the way to the right side here, so can help out those Sturm of Niki if anything actually manages to find its way into those buildings but has to get past the 45mm AT gun first uh, which was placed in a really really nice location for this game. Now meanwhile on the right side uh, Jinjeft in a little bit of a tough spot currently under fire from the Tiger E and the Alcala Panther D here uh, but it has to have a nice line of infantry that is currently sitting in a trench on the edge of the hill this area currently being pushed by Mickey. This uh, defensive area was quite exposed, so I did bring in my own AT gun here to kind of help cover that off. And I've also brought in another AT gun onto the top now uh, that can kill off any of the half tracks and so on that come up the hill. As these AT guns at this sort of range can do pretty well, so that was the intention. But so far, so good. Nothing. Uh, really coming in on our side. We've taken some artillery fire from the mortars but other than that not too much to worry about. We've just got to keep an eye on the attacks coming in in the middle here as you can see the 250 10s actually moving forwards and engaging this uh, 76 millimeter uh, infantry gun. An infantry gun is in a gun pit but after multiple shots from these 250 10s that is taken out, those HE shells getting the job done there. Tony Rick on the right side, holding off well so far against the advance of James. Manages to clean up that Marda, potentially with the stem of Niki there, that's quite nice. So I've got another PTRS squad coming up, and making sure that I have plenty of these uh, PTRS in position was very important. The PTRS and PTRDs all those AT rifles ready to clean up any light vehicles that come our way. The 45mm AT gun now getting involved with these half tracks of Mickeys. We're going to be engaging the 25010 there. Managing to bounce lots of those shots. KV1E going to be engaging these half tracks in the open. So just kind of spreading out from the left side here since we're not really under much pressure at this town which is very well defended I thought it would be a good idea to just help out on this right side where Acha and also Mickey are starting to concentrate themselves May as well just take the opportunity to hide the HUD and have a look at what's going on we can see the, the panther down here this Probably my favourite camo on all of the Panthers. Very, very awesome vehicle. Firing up onto the ridge there. Do see some ME 410s coming in. Let's see if we can zoom in onto those. As they try to find themselves some targets.
Wonderful. Guess the strafing run onto the T3485, which is now forced back. But my 45mm AT gun still killing off plenty of these half tracks. Very nice indeed. T3485 now engaging the Panzer Grenadiers as they come up. And you can see these Panzer Grenadiers, they're being slowed by the barbed wire as they try to crawl forwards. Which is exactly what we like to see. These ME410s flying over my Maxim 4Ms. Taking quite a lot of suppression, bringing a couple of Yak-9s to try and shoot them out of the sky. But since the ME410s are pretty fast, I'm not going to be able to catch up with them for the time being. And the Yak-9s just going to be hanging around waiting for any future aircraft to come in. So we're holding the left side nice and strong at the moment. Currently, Gen Jeff's having a little bit of an issue uh, with Dragoon pushing forwards with the help of Mickey. On the right side, though, James still being held back by Tiny Rick. Tiny Rick's just decided to bring up his IS-1, which is going to be defending from this crossing. And you can see I have purchased in the bottom left a Yak-9B. That is the cluster munition bomber. And since these Tigers are pretty close together, Dragoon and Mickey probably unintentionally having their Tigers so close, I thought I'd go for a double kill with the Yak-9Bs. So here they come. See if we can get rid of those tanks that work so damn well in the open. Don't have much to counter them otherwise. So there we go. Cluster munitions away. Two Tigers down. Beautiful. And we didn't even take any AA fire. So managing to get two kills there without even losing one of our aircraft is very nice indeed. Now we're using the Yak-9s to strafe the Pac-40 there to get rid of that. To allow our KV-1E and T-3485 of Adolf to stay alive. Now I am going to have to bring in a supply to try and fix that up. You can see that I bring that in. It's two crew kills so we need to replace those kills or these crews. Uh, 45 mil though in the meantime takes out one of the Panzer IVs. The other one's currently bailed out so this 45 mil has done a great job and the good thing about these 45 mil AT guns is they only cost 40 points so killing two Panzer IVs for 120 points is paying itself off three times over. Now this KV-1E did get stuck engaging the Tiger that was on the side of this hill. It managed to get line of sight all the way over the, the buildings there but we do manage to finish off that Panzer IV, so that's not going to be fixed up any time soon. We do have some snipers currently crossing the bridge here. Just moving that sniper into a position of this train line and the train station here so that we can cover off against anything that might come into this tree line across from us. You can see from this trench position, the Gavardia is doing well. I've got two of the DPs, which is why they have the DP in brackets. And that allows them to do quite a lot of damage to these Panzer Grenadiers. But as these Tigers come down the hill, from this range, the 45mm AT gun does have a chance to penetrate just about. Manages to get a couple of criticals. Gets the loader knockout, transmission damage. Is still bouncing off the front of that. Can it find the kill though? Tiger shows its side armor briefly. <laughs> 45 mil gets the job done. Now the next Tiger moving into position. And well, look at that. Just as my supply arrives, the KV-1E actually gets taken out. And with the push-up of all of these Panzer IVs and the Tiger E Führer, well, the T-3485 also goes down. That was really, really bad timing for me there. So what can I do with the Stuttbecke? I'm just going to have it come back behind this tree line. So it doesn't get killed anytime soon. And one thing I have done is brought up these artillerists. These provide me with radios to the front line, which allows me to use corrected shot. Corrected shot allows my artillery to aim twice as fast as they usually would. And you can see that taking effect here as my 203mm artillery fires away. 
currently aiming at the Panzer IV blob. So in come the shells. And you'll see that they start to pin down the Panzer IVs nicely. Not going to stop them from killing my AT gun though. So I am still building up my air force. You can see again I've purchased another Yak-9B in the bottom left. I'm going to be bringing in two. And I'm going to be trying to get them into the right line in order to kill off the Tiger E's and the Panzer IVs. Just trying to line them up well. Now, since there is some AA, one of my Yaks doesn't get the bombs off, but the second one does. We're able to kill off one Panzer IV, but we do lose our Yak-9 in the process. My other two Yak-9s did try and intercept the ME-410s as they came in to kill my Yak-9Bs. But uh, unfortunately I lose both of my cluster bombers there and the Yak-9 fighter. So a pretty bad air engagement for myself. However I am able to get this Yak-9B to engage the ME-410 as he bounces off the ground. And lovely job there as we shoot down the ME-410. We did manage to get one back, but we lost three aircraft, two of them being cluster bombers, which was not ideal. I would have loved to have got a cluster bomb strike onto all of these tanks that kept pushing forward. You can see both Mickey and Aka pushing up here with just so many armored vehicles. Like, imagine a double cluster bomb strike onto this area right now. Not going to be, however, as my... 45mm AT gun continues to destroy Opel Blitz as they come up. And any infantry that's currently tried to cross these areas, the barbed wire here, towards these buildings has been mowed down or at least even if they've got into the building just burnt out by the LPO squad. So we've been doing well so far to hold the left side. Meanwhile in the mid though things aren't looking so great. As the Panther Gs and Tigers uh, start to take control of the open ground, there isn't really too much our team can do about it. Even with Genjeft here building up a bunch of T-34-85s, these aren't actually going to end up doing too much against Panther Gs, Panther As and Tigers at range. And you can see the artillery now coming in to start to mess up the morale of these units. Nice kill, I think once again from my 45mm AT gun. I think we took out a second Tiger here. See both of these Tigers getting stuck behind the barbed wire and just getting picked off as they try to push forwards. But glorious amount of tanks now on the top of the hill here. James and Aka bringing those in, trying to make a push. This would have been again another perfect opportunity for a cluster strike but I only had one available at this time and I have had to reinforce myself in other ways. I've got the IS-1 coming over. That was actually originally the one that was on the left side. I ended up fast moving it all the way down to this bridge and all the way up here because I saw something previously uh, get destroyed uh, near this area. I think it was, yeah, this KV-1E ended up getting killed and I thought it was potentially by an AT gun in this tree line, so I didn't want to risk my IS-1, so I drove it all the way back around, and it was... I think it's definitely worth doing that, to be better safe than sorry. The IS-1's the only tank that I have that is that heavy. But anyway, uh, Strafniki have arrived, but the Panzer IV is pushing hard here. You can see the Panzer G uh, leading the charge as Aka makes a move towards the town, but as the smoke clears, the 45mm AT gun is able to start firing away. I'm going to try and find some criticals onto the Panther G there. Uh, Kiev Z7 going to get uh, unloaded there, force unloaded, the Panzergrenz coming out, but here we go, another bombing strike. Look at all those tanks on the ground there, plus the munitions away. And that's going to be about well, let's just count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tanks destroyed. We did lose one of the bombers in the process. 
but a lovely, lovely stroke there for our cluster munitions. 45mm AT gun still firing away. These Panzer IVs trying to push over. PTRS now opening up as well to help out with the criticals. We managed to crew kill the Panther G. Panzer IV also crew killed now. The second Panzer IV gets a sight damage as it continues to fire away. These PTRS and Gavardia were just doing a fantastic job of holding back these units. You also see the Yak-9B come in there with the cluster bomb strike from Tiny Rick. And uh, yeah, funnel, funneled into this area was Pac-45, or Pac-38, sorry. I don't think, well, it's not a Pac-38, it's a 45mm Russian AT gun. But um, it does confuse me because at the bottom it says Pac-38. We are still doing a good job regardless. IS-1 now in position as well, which is also doing a fine job. And we've got three KV-85s that are now going to fast move up onto this hill because I wanted to get into a position to maybe side shot some of these heavy tanks that are now pushing across the open. You can see that we only control 15 flags. There is 13 minutes now until a minor defeat for our opponents. But if they manage to get any more flags than our ourselves at any point in the game, then we will lose very quickly. So we've got to be careful about that. Anyway, more Yak-9s coming in. More cluster bombs going for the kills onto the Panther A's and the Panther G here. Just got to try and prevent these from making any ground. There goes the Panther A Führer, and there goes the Panther G. That's just going to leave a singular Panther G there with the crew kill to push that area. So I'm, I'm fine for now. It's, it's all good. Now the reason I chose to bring in the cluster munitions on this left side was because the IS-1 was actually under pressure. But now with the only remaining unit, the Panther G with the crew kill, I don't have to worry as much. Now meanwhile on the left side, uh, Panther D, Alfkeller Panther D and the Panther A Fjord are starting to push up. But they're getting caught up attacking the Bunker Maxim, which is absolutely fine. So currently Adolf holding back here with the T-34-85s and a couple of ISU-152s. Those ISUs being Jinjefs, and then he's got uh, his main tank force on the right side here, which is another ISU, multiple T-34-85s. He's even got more coming up here. But uh, if at any point we lose the, this uh, point and uh, this point then things can get very sticky and you can see that we've already lost control of this side and this is also under threat as we don't really have too much there to defend. The main problem comes down to the fact that these KV-85s, although they can penetrate Tigers at, at close range, they do struggle at long range. And this Stug's going to get some free shots onto my KV-85s as I failed to stop them in time. I had them on a fast move command rather than a quick hunt command, so they didn't stop to fire soon enough. But we are going to manage to crew kill that Stug 3, so that's not too bad. Now finally, this uh, 45mm AT gun does go down. But my IS is still in position, so goodbye to that pack, or that Panzer IV. And my IS engages. There is some infantry coming out of these trees now, trying to press towards the Sturm of Niki. They're not making too much ground as this Bunker Maxim does actually fire across and pin those down. I've also got the Sniper, of course, going in there, so that's perfect. Got a couple of Yak-9Bs coming across, managed to kill off a, another Tiger in the center. Not too much AA this far up, so I managed to get away with both of those bombers, which is really, really nice. Some artillery comes down, wipes out my M15. That was providing anti-air cover on this left side. Got another M15 behind uh, this hill. It's just to stop things like these JU-87s from taking advantage of our defenses. Because all that really needs to happen is these ju 87s start pinning down all my Bunker Maxims and maybe even the IS-1 and then that's going to cause like a big old breakthrough. But you can see here that with these Maxim 4Ms, they do enough to stop the dive from the ju 87s And most of those ju 87s don't get their bombs off. I think one did onto the IS-7, but or IS-1, sorry, but that's about it. 
and the M15 actually ends up shooting that one down. But now, 14 points in favour of our opponents. They have managed to find the breakthrough. There is now 2 minutes and 10 seconds left until our minor defeat. It looks like Dragoon at this point did crash, which is unfortunate. But currently it's Mickey making a lot of the ground here with Aka backing him up and Dragoon on the hill is doing a fine job but the AI taking control of his Panthers and attacking these T-34s from a distance is going to be okay but Jinjeft certainly has a lot of these in position and having saved up his tank forces for so long it's time for Jinjeft to charge back forwards. I've set down an attack beacon letting the guys know that this point is probably the easiest for them to take back as all of the T-34s start opening up we hide the hard we can start to see these engagements ensue look at all these tanks come through these trees it's ridiculous we get an air engagement going on as well over the top yak 9 takes down nemi 410 i think we took down two of them actually but all of these units continuing to attack move across we're getting the side shots into the tigers here we managed to kill off i think it was a panther g on the left side uh, my sniper's managing to hold back the infantry on the left, but we're back to 13 and 13 as the counter-attack is underway from Genjeft. All of his T-34s trying to do their best. Gun-jammed Panther A just going to have to retreat. Look at the amount of shots bouncing off the front, though. But if we do manage to find our way to another objective or two, we can continue to put the hurt onto our opponents. So, Genjeff now coming in again with the T 3476s, and although his side did collapse at this point, uh, like, at, like earlier on, he's certainly making up for it now with his counter attack coming in with a lot of tanks. He's T-3476 has given a fast move command. He doesn't even care about attack moving them. He just wants to get them to this capture point. Look at them go. Even if they're hitting the mark, they're bouncing. Nothing the 100 millimeters of penetration can do against the front armor of a tiger and a panther, but... The point is captured and you can see that they, that is going to mean that we win the game in 1 minute and 15 seconds if this remains the case. I managed to bring in a couple of Yak 9s. We cluster bomb these Marders. I only end up killing one of them and I lose two. So not the best trade at all. But our front line's easily holding on that left side right now. We're strained a little bit here. But the IS just tanking shots off the front armor. Look at that. Making it very difficult for our opponents to push. My KV-85 currently sat here just holding this point for us. But we're now 15 to 11 with 32 seconds left until winning. Vardia have been moved up onto this point and although they are pinned down they are covered by the T-34s for now and look at all of these T-34s pushing up I think just the sheer amount of T-34s that Jinjeth had at this point was enough to do the job and although Aka is continuing to push here he's not going to be quick enough and uh, three seconds left on the clock that is it game over and <laughs> a very very close game Extremely close breakthrough game finishes in our favor after 27 minutes and 57 seconds. Absolutely crazy stuff. So we were, what, at one point, less than two minutes from losing. And then we managed to take back those points in a lovely counterattack from Genjeft. And uh, stop that from being the case and end up winning ourselves. So, yeah, not too bad. 3,665 kills to 2,020 losses in the end. And in Rick also 3,780 kills to 2,265 losses. So nice job by Tiny Rick as well. Not so good KDs for Adolf and Genjeff, but still helped us win in the end. 
and that's all that matters. So in terms of kills, let's have a look. This 45 mil bunker <laughs> certainly did the job. Many of these infantry kills would have been uh, from killing the Elba Blitz before they unloaded, so that's where those kills are coming from. Uh, a few half track kills there, two Tiger E kills from a 45 mil AT gun is pretty nuts, and two Panzer IVs there. So really, really nice bunker for us. Uh, placed in a very, very nice position. Some of my yaks did pay themselves off. This one, for example, killing two Stugs and shooting down an ME410. Uh, KV1E is held strong in certain positions. And look at this yak 9B claiming most of the kills. This was the one that hit the massive amount of armor on the hill of both James and Acker as they were trying to advance down that road. IS-1 did manage to blunt that push on the left side. Panzer IV and Panther G both going down to that. M15 did manage to shoot down two of the JU87 D3s in the end, uh, but that is about it for the sort of notable units, I think. Yeah, this 45mm bunker <laughs> saving us quite a lot of pain on the left-hand side. So our defense worked out nicely. The open ground expectedly got taken over by the Tigers and Panthers in the mid-game. But due to the massive force of T-34s, we won the game. That's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.